Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our program. Thank you to my colleagues, fellow Chazanim and Cantors for helping make this program possible and for joining us and for all the beautiful music that you are going to present this evening. So today we are celebrating Yom Hatzma'ut and specifically the 73rd birthday of Israel, of the state of Israel. And this program this evening, we're going to be doing similarly to the program that we did for Tu Bishvat, where each cantor will first speak about their song, and then they will sing it, and they will present the song. So I will be opening the program, and of course the first song that I will sing is Hatikva. Before I speak about the history of Hatikva, and before we go into it, just imagine that you were a Jew in the 19th century, living in Europe, in a land where you do not belong, in a country that always reminds you that you are an outsider, that attacks your people, that kills your people, that does not allow you to participate in mainstream society. You always feel like you are homeless, like you have nowhere to escape to. You are kicked from, from country to country, from land to land, kicked out here, kicked out there, and always wandering, endlessly wandering, and feeling that when will we one day have a home that we can call our own, a base, a fort. This was the feeling that the author of Hatikva, the poet Naftali Hertz Inbar, felt in the 1870s. Inbar lived from 1856 to 1909, and he was originally from the city of Zloshov in then Poland and today in modern-day Ukraine. And he found himself in the situation, the situation where he felt at loss and he felt like a homeless person in land he did not belong in. In 1878, he wrote a book of poems, and one of these poems was a nine-verse poem called Tikvatenu, which means Our Hope. And Tikvatenu was an optimistic response to the forming of one of the earliest 19th century Jewish settlements, in Palestine, called Petah Tikva, which means the opening of hope. In 1882, Imber's hope of living in a Jewish land was realized and he emigrated to the Ottoman-ruled Palestine. And he began reading his poems to the early Jewish pioneers in the Jewish villages. In 1887, Shmuel or Samuel Cohen, a very young, around 17 or 18 years old, resident of Rishon Litzion, or as we today call it sometimes, a Russian Litzion, because of so many Russian people. Um, he was a fellow with a musical background, and he heard this poem, and he started singing the poem to a melody. He started singing the poem. And he edited the poem and set it to a melody, which he knew from Romania. And he turned this poem into a song. And he called it Hatikva. Uh, when the surrounding Jewish farmers heard the song for the first time and the emotional impact that it had on them, they started spreading it, and the song became more and more popular. And it became so popular in the Zionist communities that in 1901, it was chosen to be the anthem of the World Zionist Congress. In 1948, when the State of Israel was being founded, it became the unofficial anthem of, of Israel. And oddly enough, it only became the official anthem in 2004, so fairly recently. So let's talk about the melody of, of Hatikva. Where does this melody come from? What is its history? It actually has a very interesting history, and it's a fairly old melody. The melody uh, is based on a late Renaissance Italian melody composed by the Italian tenor Giuseppe Cenci, and he was also known as Giuseppino del Biado. And this melody uh, comes from a song that he wrote called Il Mantovano, uh, which means the person from Mantova. It was also known as the, uh, the Song of Mantua. Mantua was a really beautiful city in northern Italy, not far from Milano. It's a beautiful Renaissance city. And so this song was called La Mantovana. And it appeared in his book of madrigals, in the book of Cenci's madrigals, in the year 1600. Madrigals are a form of Renaissance uh, song. It's usually secular, um, and it was mostly 
came from, from Italy. And the melody became very popular in Renaissance Italy and Renaissance Europe, and eventually spread all over Europe. And eventually it had adaptations in Polish, Romanian, Flemish, Scottish, and Ukrainian. And it became like a folk song in those countries. And especially in Poland and Romania, it became like a folk song. And this is how our friend Shmuel Cohen happened to know this melody, happened to have heard it 200 years later in Romania, where he came from. So he heard it as a Romanian folk song and decided to adapt that melody from his from his uh, subconscious to, to these beautiful words. Interestingly, this melody was also used by another composer, the Czech composer Bedrik Smetana, in his sym symphonic poem celebrating his homeland, Bohemia, called Mavlast, which means fatherland. And it's interesting that both he and Samuel Cohen felt this kind of, uh, this feeling of setting this melody specifically to texts or to themes about one's homeland. Hatikva being the homeland of Israel for Cohen and for Smetana, the homeland being Bohemia. So in the original Italian, the, the melody actually sounds like this. Fuggi, fuggi, fuggi da questo cielo, aspro e duro spietato gelo. Tu che tutto in proge ne leggi, ne per pianto ti friangi o pieghi. Fier tiranno, gedelanno, fuggi, fuggi, fuggi da dove l'averno, sull'elbrine la sege eterno. So you can hear how it's very similar, but there are some differences. So Cohen did um, put his, his own kind of twist and spin on it. So the words of Hatikva uh, are about expressing a yearning and describe a longing within the soul of each Jew that one day he or she will return to Zion, will return to Jerusalem, a land from which they come. And that one day after 2000 years, there will be a free nation um, in that land. And... Um, it specifically mentions land of Zion and Jerusalem and that the Jew yearns and looks towards the east. So I will now be singing uh, the song, Hatikva. Please join me. Mi 
not a hate seem a bagan, the field stale call me a bazan, who was a daughter Zara Dagan, who was a daughter Zara Dagan. All the meat or a all the me braha, la avoda vela melaha, la avoda vela melaha. Second, I'd like to share with you a beautiful setting of the prayer for the state of Israel, Avinu Sheba Shamayim, uh, composed by our renowned colleague, Cantor Saul Zim. Give 
give our leaders the wisdom to protect and defend, to guide and to help the land of Israel. Bring peace and joy to the land we love. Oh God, help your people with strength from above. beautiful. We're now going to be moving to Cantor Amy Levy from Congregation Knesset Israel. She's actually not here tonight because um, she had a meeting at her synagogue. That was an emergency meeting. So, But she pre-recorded her songs. And uh, Cantor uh, David Tillman will be presenting these songs and we'll be playing these recordings. So we'll now move to Cantor David Tillman. Thank you very much, uh, Cantor Agar. Uh, as we heard, Cantor Levy was called to a, a last minute emergency meeting at KI, and she asked me to introduce her song. She's recorded these songs with, accompanied by her husband, Ross Levy. Cantor Levy will sing for us Aniva Ata, which is a song written by the Israeli singer, Eric Einstein. It means you and I, Aniva Ata, together we shall change the world. It can be understood either as a love song, or as a political statement, or perhaps both. The second song is called Od Yavo Shalom Aleinu, Salam. Uh, it is a song of peace written by Moshe ben Ari when he was in the band called Sheva. It is sung in both in Hebrew and Arabic and has gained popularity all over the world. Od Yavo Shalom Aleinu means peace will come into us soon. It is an upbeat song that became an anthem associated with attempts to create a peaceful end to the Arab-Israeli conflict. Halavai should only be the case. Anive Ata and Od Yavo Shalom Aleinu is sung by my colleague Cantor Amy Levy, accompanied by her husband, Ross. Hodiavo shall know my lady, 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 Hodiavo shall know
So we say thank you to, to Cantor Amy Levy for her recording, beautiful recordings of those two songs. We now will be moving to Hazan Howard Glanz from Congregation Adat Jeshurun. Shalom, friends. I, uh, first of all, wanted to ask if anybody already knows why I would be wearing a baseball jersey tonight. Well, it's not just any baseball jersey. It's the Israel Olympic team official baseball jersey. And as some of you may know the story, they were ready to compete in the Summer Olympics in Japan, 2000, uh, yeah, 2020. And um, well, we know what happened there. It was postponed. It was a very long ride for Israel baseball that finally got to this point. They're very proud of themselves and then they were stopped. But it looks like we'll have another uh, chance this summer for them to go, the best eight teams in the world to compete at the Olympics. So we send them our very best and uh, our wishes for their success. I also wanted to introduce for a moment here the song that I'm going to sing. And when I first prepared it, I had no idea that um, David Broza would actually be here live in the community. Uh, what I understand, though, is that there are no tickets left, so don't get too excited. Uh, but he will be here, I believe, this Saturday night for a concert in Sellersville that will be at least partially live. David Broza was born and raised in Israel, from what I understand, but he moved to Spain with his family when he was 12 years old. And they moved back to Israel after some time also in England. And he really became very well known for this song. It really sprung him. It was his springboard into fame. And he wrote it together with a very well-known poet, Yonatan Gethin. Am I uh, on? Because all I'm seeing is Jacob. I'm on? OK. So. I wanted to start with a bit of um, history behind you and um, start it again. So it starts at the right time. Okay. Anima beat me וזהו שלי די עצוב. האביב חלף עבר לו, מי יודע אם ישוב. הליצן היה למלך, הנביא נהיה ליצן, ושכחתי את הדרך, אבל אני עוד כאן. Thank you. 
ולא תשובה. אנשים חיים במתח, מחפשים סיבה לנשום, ואומרים שנאה לרצח, מדברים אל השלום, ויהיה טוב, יהיה טוב, כן. לפעמים אני נשפט. אז הלילה הוא הלילה, איתך אני נשאר. שם למעלה, בת שמיים, עננים לומדים ראו, ואני מביט למעלה ורואה מטוס חטוף. כאן כבר ממשלות וגנרלים שחילקו לנו את הנוף ושלהם ולשלנו מתי נראה את הסוף. הנה בא נשיא מצרים איך שמחתי לקראתו, פירמידות בעיניים ושלום במקפלתו. ואמרנו, בואו נשלימה ונחיה כמו אחים, כן. ועזבו, אמר קדימה, רצצו מהשטחים. לפעמים אני נשבע. אז הלילה, או הלילה, איתך אני נשאר. אני מביט מהחלום, לראות אם כל זה אמיתי. מביט מהחלום, וממרמר לתפילתי. עוד נגור זאב עם כבש, ונמר ירבת סמדי. אך בינתיים, אל תוציאי את ידך מכף ידי. לפעמים אני נשבר. אז הלילה, או הלילה, איתך אני נשאר. אני מביט מהחלום. אולי מגיע יום חדש. The second song I want to sing for you, I'd like to take you back to 1979. My first trip to Israel. It was either that or reform school. I'm only half joking. I was on a program called Shirut La'am. And part of the trip was taking all of the volunteers for Shirut La'am on different hikes throughout Israel. And I'll never forget the hike that brought us to Sharm el-Sheikh and how we slept in sleeping bags on the sand and woke up in time to watch the sun rise. While Sharm el-Sheikh is now part of Mitzrayim, part of Egypt, it is such a sign, it's a symbol for me, this song, of not just 
what we're willing to do for peace and willing to give for peace, but just for the hope of peace. Sharma Sheikh. I don't want to forget after I sing, so I also want to just say thank you so much to Jacob for putting this together and Kim for her work for the Kihila. You've just been here a year. You've been a, 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 a COVID cantor. You started with the job as a, as, a, as a chazan as COVID. I can't even imagine. And what you've done both with the Tu Bishvat and with this program, just uh, Yosemina Klal, and uh, much appreciated. And Kim, you are really bringing our kahila together over and over again, even in these difficult times. Sharma Sheikh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hazan Glant. Pleasure. We're now going to be 
going to uh, Hazan David Tillman, who will be singing two songs. Thank you, uh, Hazan Agar. Shalom, my beloved colleagues and all our friends who are watching this uh, wonderful program. Um, my first song is called Gish Li Chag. It was written by the great tunesmith, the great composer, the immortal Naomi Shemer, who wrote over 500 songs, of which the most famous is Yerushalayim Sozahav, that we'll hear a little bit later. But this song I heard for the first time in, in, in the place that we just saw in Howard's uh, video in Caesarea, uh, sitting in, this, in the, uh, the auditorium, in the um, amphitheater in Caesarea in June of 1973. I heard this song sung and I was immediately taken by it. It is a song of unbridled optimism. And the period in Israel between 1967 and the Yom Kippur War in 1973 was, in fact, a period of great optimism. This song, as with many songs of Naomi Shemer and other composers, is really a contemporary tefillah, a contemporary prayer. And it poses a number of situations. It says, Yesh li yom yom chag. I have every day a holiday. Yesh li chag yom yom. I have a holiday every day. And for all this, I say hallelujah. I thank God. It is written in an up-tempo contemporary Western field, but if you try to clap with it, you're going to get in a little bit of trouble because there's a measure of six followed by a measure of two, which makes it very hard to clap in the chorus. Yeshli Yom Yom Chak. Hine Hayom Chalaf Chalach Hakeshem. Vekeshet Bamarom Akshav Tilu. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yom Chag, Yeshli Chag, Yom, Yom, Yeshli Yom, Yom Chag, Hallelujah. Atino Kot Pitom Yodim Lalechet, Une Hashesh Pitom Yodim Likro, Vim Hashemesh. Al ha kol sochet, aze huze ha chag ba ha dago. Yesh li yom yom chag, yesh li chag yom yom, yesh li yom yom chag. Hallelujah, yesh li yom yom. Chag, yesh li chag, yom, yom, yesh li yom, yom, chag, hallelujah. Hallelujah, big loud varim ka'ele. Hallelujah, ani adayin shar. Hallelujah, yom yom ve'eze pele. Hallelujah, lachad shelo nigmar. Yesh li yom yom chag, yesh li chag yom yom, yesh li yom yom chag. Hallelujah. Yesh li yom yom chag, yesh li chag yom yom, yesh li yom yom chag, hallelujah. Yesh li yom yom chag, yesh li chag yom yom, yesh li yom chag, hallelujah. Yesh li yom yom chag, Yesh li chag yom yom, yesh li yom yom chag, 
Alleluia. Next is the song, the second most popular song written in Israel in the last 60 plus years. And in 1979, the Beth Shalom Adel Chorale and I were in Israel to sing in the International Gathering of Choirs, the Zimriya, staying in a beautiful hotel in, uh, in Herzliya. And we heard coming up from the ground floor, played by the quartet, this wonderful song. And we asked around and we said, what is that song? What is that song? And we found it found out it was called Hallelujah, and it had just won second prize in the Eurovision Song Contest, sung by a group called uh, uh, Zavat Chalav Udvash, was the name of the group, and uh, the song became an international hit of mega proportions. And so we brought it back with us from Israel in 1979. We wrote it, got an arrangement of it written, and we debuted it at the Beth Shalom Annual Music Festival in May of 1980, and it's since been a world-famous hit. Please join me, if you can, at least on the words, Hallelujah. <laughs> Hazan Tillman, beautiful songs and beautiful performance. We're now We're going, going to going. Uh, moving to Cantor Elena Zarch from Temple Beth Am. And she actually also pre recorded her songs just to get the best quality. 
So first she's going to speak, and then we're going to play back, play back her. her uh... Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And it is such a pleasure to hear all this be you know, beautiful uh, melodies and all the beautiful songs and actually hear the voices of my dear friends. It's such a pleasure and it's such a joy and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, so uh, I was very fortunate uh, last Friday, right before uh, uh, we Zoom from the sanctuary on Shabbat, uh, my uh, music director, Mark Dougherty and I, we gathered together. We, we just had like maybe 20 minutes to put it together. So it's not perfect, the recording, but we recorded two songs. Uh, the first song is Erev Shel Shoshanim. Uh, this is the song that uh, at Betham we sing every single time that we celebrate a life um, uh, event like a wedding uh, or a anniversary. Every time there is so we celebrate something to love, something to hope for, something beautiful. I think this Erev Shel Shoshanim, the evening of roses is the most beautiful song. And it's very interesting, although the text of the song, and I'm going to read it to you, is uh, of the uh, secular, um, uh, it's, it's a secular love text, it's a, uh, put on a uh, secular text. It reminds us of the beautiful biblical words from the Song of Songs. And, and this, uh, we are told that the poet, he invites his lover to join him in a fra fragrant garden for an evening of roses. And here is the beautiful translation. It is an evening of roses. Let us go out to the grove. Mirth, spices, and frankincense are a carpet for you to tread. The night comes slowly and a breeze of roses is blowing. Let me whisper a ballad, a song of love. It is dawn, a dove is cooing. Your hair is filled with dew. Your lips are like a rose to the morning. I shall pick it for myself. What a uh, beautiful, uh, very sensual, sensuous words. And second song that uh, we recorded is Lach Yerushalayim, uh, another song that I uh, love to sing. Uh, the song is actually uh, is dedicated to the city of Jerusalem. Uh, you know, we uh, this is the city that has been in our hopes and in our prayers for such a long time, over the 2000, uh, uh, you know, years. And this particular song, Lach Yerushalayim, uh, came to life after the Six Day War, and uh, it is very energetic and it's very, um, uh, you know, it's, it shows uh, how proud we are of uh, the, uh, I guess, our victory and, of course, of the return to Jerusalem. And um, nothing else we can celebrate on this birthday of Israel as with the song Lach Yerushalayim. And the text of the song uh, says, for you Jerusalem between the city walls, for you Jerusalem, a new light will shine. In a heart there exists but one song for you Jerusalem between the Jordan and the sea. For you Jerusalem, an ancient glorious view. For you Jerusalem, a riddle and a secret. For you Jerusalem, a song shall always rise. For you, Jerusalem, the city of David's citadel. And so please enjoy. Um, there is a funny moment actually in the recording. So you know how when you record stuff, sometimes you don't know what the final result is. So at one point, uh, you know, we are, Mark is playing, I am singing, and suddenly the screen got black and I'm continuing you know, I'm singing, I'm not sure if it's recording. And so between the songs, you'll see me turning to Mark and like gesturing to him, like, what shall we do? Shall we continue or? So, uh, uh, you know, just to make sure that you understand a little funny episode between the two songs. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Bye. 
Thank you so much, Hazan Zarf. So uh, with that, we are coming to the end of our program. I will be closing the program with a song you all know very well, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav. 
So just a little history about Jerusalem of gold, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav. The first song I sang was Hatikva, which was a song of hope about returning to the land of Israel and specifically about returning to Jerusalem. And in that song, Hatikva, we say the eyes of the Jew are looking towards Jerusalem with hope of ever returning there. And so the song Jerusalem of Gold kind of answers that song. Jerusalem of Gold was written by Naomi Shemer, the, the same composer that Chazan Til Tilman mentioned. She's a great Israeli popular composer. And she wrote the song for the Israel Song Festival of May 15th, 1967, which was the night after Israel's 19th Independence Day. And originally, her lyrics were actually uh, all sad and also slightly hopeful, kind of similar to Hatifa. Why? Because at that point, until 1967, Jews were banned from the Old City. Uh, the Old City and East Jerusalem was under the control of Jordan, and Jews were kicked out of there. And they lost their homes and possessions and they became refugees from Old City and East Jerusalem. And they were barred from either returning or entering the areas under Jordanian control. Um, and a lot of the holy sites, the holy Jewish sites, were desecrated and damaged during that period. So it, it was a, this was from 1948 when, after the State of Israel was formed, there was a war between Israel and the surrounding Arab nations. And it was a war that Israel ultimately, ultimately won, but they had lost the old city and East Jerusalem. And so for almost 20 years, they were totally barred from Jerusalem. And so she wrote the song similar in vain to Hatikva. Um, and she actually, the song originally had four verses and it used traditional Jewish poetry and themes. It, it had quotes from, from Talmudic rabbis, it had some quotes from Psalms, uh, all sorts of quotes. And actually, uh, one of the quotes where she says that, to all your songs, I am a liar, lechol shiraich ani kinor. Kinor is the word in Hebrew for, in, in modern Hebrew, we call violin kinor, but actually that word goes back way, way back in our history, two to 3,000 years, it's used in the Psalms. And a kinor was used in the great temple, the second temple of Jerusalem. And it was most likely something like a, a sort of string instrument. We don't know for sure what it could have looked like. It could have been like a lyre or it could have been like a violin. That's why today in modern Hebrew we call violins kinor. And there's an interesting story to the song. So she originally wrote it to be a sort of sad but hopeful song. And three weeks after she published the song, the Six-Day War broke out with, again, the surrounding Arab nations. And she would go around uh, and sing the song to the uh, Israeli Defense Forces as a morale-boosting anthem to kind of get them to really get back to Jerusalem. And she, she sang it for the troops, and actually the troops were the first to hear the song of, of, of anyone in the world. On June 7th, 1967, the IDF took back Eastern Jerusalem and the Old City from the Jordanians. And actually, uh, Naomi Shemer was about to go sing the song for a group of paratroopers when she heard that the Western Wall and the Temple Mount were taken back. So she quickly wrote us a new verse, uh, a fifth verse, where she said that we have come back to the old city, we have come back to uh, Temple Mount, to the Western Wall. Uh, she based the new verse on the second verse of the song, which says, hopefully one day we will come back. And now the fifth one says, we have come back. And there's also a line in this fifth verse, which says that the shofar sounds at the Temple Mount. And this was a reference <clears throat> to an army chaplain rabbi, Shlomo Gorin, who sounded the shofar when they got onto the Temple Mount immediately after the capture of the Western Wall. So I'll be singing uh, just two verses of this of the five verses. I'll be singing the first and the last. The first, which hopes for one day when we can return, and the last, 
which celebrates our return. Happy birthday to Israel. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to my colleagues and wishing everyone a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Kanner Agar. I just want to say one thing. I'm not sure if it was my anxiety or that it was saying across my screen, your internet is unstable, but I just want to really thank and appreciate and give uh, a proper introduction to Elena Zahar, who, um, who also I should have introduced at the beginning. I'm not sure if it was anxiety or the internet, but wow, we have such talent in our community. Um, I feel like music heals and uplifts us. And um, for this one moment, I felt like we were in a concert or a service together. And I appreciate it. I put in the chat an upcoming program this Sunday. It's called Philly Loves Israel. And I had to put it in because Hazan Glantz mentioned David Broza. And I was like, well, he's coming to us too on Sunday. So feel free to check out www.jewishphilly.org backslash OIR. And you will also see that um, Rabbi Lieb and other wonderful programs are coming your way. Also Shavuot, where you can see all of our talent as well. So good night and thank you to everyone that came and thank you to all of our talented, talented, talented clergy. Thank you. Thank you.